Hey everyone, Arshun here and welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be giving you a summary of my take of the book, 12 Rules for Life by Jordan B. Peterson. Jordan B. Peterson is a clinical psychologist and a lecturer, and he's very quickly becoming one of the world's most popular influential thinkers. His book, 12 Rules for Life, was just released this year in January 2018, and it has already become a number one bestseller internationally. In this 350-page book, Jordan Peterson provides 12 practical principles of how to live a more meaningful life. And today's video, I'm going to be giving you a summary of the first six. So let's get straight into the review, shall we? Rule number one, stand up straight with your shoulders back. In rule number one, Jordan Peterson uses the example of how lobsters behave in a combat to explain his point. In every new territory, there are limited high quality shelters for lobsters to rest in, and sometimes lobsters will need to engage in combat with each other in order to gain this territory. But in every fight, there will be a winner and a loser. If two dominant lobsters were to engage in a combat, if one of the lobsters that was previously dominant were to lose, its brain would basically dissolve and a new subordinate lobster brain will grow in place. This previously dominant lobster won't even fight its previously defeated opponents. And so how is this relevant to people? Well. People like lobsters have the construct of the dominance hierarchy built into us. So in each and every one of us, in the foundation of our brain, there is a counter that monitors our status and, and role in society. And it assesses our um, position in the hierarchy by watching how other people treat us. If our peers judge us as someone to be of low status, this counter will actually restrict the serotonin availability in our body, which is more likely to leave us depressed, anxious, and less confident. Our posture will be more reserved, more crouched down, and more defeated looking. And it will also attract a lot of negative attention, especially from bullies, because bullies can sense your timidness from your posture. So, how do we reset this counter? How do we jumpstart this positive feedback loop? Well, what we can do is we can stand up straight with our shoulders back. When you do this, you're, you're basically showing that, you know, I can handle whatever life throws at me. And all you need to do is you need to tell yourself that, hey, I may be down right now, but there's so much opportunity for me. So it's not so much fake it until you make it. It's more of the belief that you have the ability to jumpstart a positive feedback loop. And you can because you know right now that the difference between um, the lobster that wins and the lobster that loses is the availability of serotonin. So what you want to do is you want to increase the amount of serotonin in your body. And by standing up straight, you're also um, implying that you can handle whatever is given to you. Uh, and we are not just our body, we're also a psyche. Standing up is not just about the physical, but it's also about the metaphysical. And it just shows everyone that we are more likely to accept challenges than brace ourselves for a catastrophe. And by doing this, you will find that more people uh, will, become up, will be coming up to you to be giving opportunities to you. And you'll also feel that the people around you will start treating you as someone of higher status. Rule number two, treat yourself like someone you are responsible for helping. In rule number two, Jordan Peterson asks us to imagine that a hundred people are being prescribed a drug. And he says that according to research, one third of the people will not even collect their prescription. And half of the other two thirds will either take the medication wrongly, will skip doses, or even quit taking it early. And of course, there are reasons as to why this may happen. It could be that maybe some people um, may not um, entirely trust their doctor's opinion, or um, they may not be able to afford the medication, so they have to stagger their doses. But then Jordan Peterson asks, what if the same situation were to happen, but to your pets or to your family members? 
do you do the same thing? And Jordan Peterson also explains why, on average, we are less likely to take care of ourselves than other people. And the reason is that people are self-conscious. We are self-conscious of our actions, our limitations, and our flaws. And we feel that we are not deserving. But the thing is, you are important to the people around you. You are important to your pets and your family members. If you are not um, well or not around, who is going to take care of them? And so um, it's really important to take care of yourself because we all have a role to play in the unfolding destiny of the world. Rule number three, make friends with people who want the best for you. In rule number three, Jordan Peterson talks about his childhood and how he had a group of friends that he thought had a lot of potential, especially one of his pals called Chris, who he thought was really intelligent. And it's very heartbreaking to hear that his friend Chris actually commits suicide in his 40s. And in Rule 3, Jordan Peterson shares about some of the um, things in Chris's life which he felt may not have been very helpful for him. And one of them being his choice of friends. And Jordan Peterson gives an example of friends who may not be very helpful um, for your well-being. So for example, you are trying to quit smoking and you have a group of friends who you normally smoke with and you tell them that, hey, I want to quit this habit. And if your friend still offers you a cigarette, even though that, even though that he knows that you want to quit, that um, should be a red flag to you. And it's most likely that your friend is trying to offer you um, the cigarette again because if you can successfully quit your bad habit it makes his bad habit of smoking look just you know bad and just makes the other person feel bad that he can't quit as well and Jordan Peterson also talks about why he thinks that people continuously choose um, you know the wrong people as their friends and it could be that because some people have a low self-worth and they refuse to take responsibility for their life they don't just don't believe that they deserve better so they don't go looking for it and that could be the reason why and so jordan peterson says that it's all right to look for people who want to elevate you and not drag you down rule number four compare yourself to who you were yesterday and not who someone else is today there will always be someone who is better off than us and someone who is also worse off than us. But the thing is, we are always our own constant and therefore we are the best person to compare ourselves with. And, you know, we just don't know what is going on in the lives of other people. There are just so many dimensions and often when we compare ourselves with someone else, we only look at one dimension or one slice of the other person's life and often that is just not realistic at all and not in tune with real life for example your colleague might just um, have gotten a really big promotion at work but his marriage is breaking apart whereas your marriage is still happy and intact whose life is better and jordan peterson gives us this piece of advice he says to use ourselves as a measurement and to make a conscious decision to improve ourselves each and every, and every day so that who we are today was better than who we were yesterday and imagine the progress that can be made if we did this every single day for the next year. Rule number five, do not let your children do anything that makes you dislike them. So rule number five, is for um, parents who have very young children and also for those of you who work with very young kids. So in this rule, Jordan Peterson says that, you know, you may love your kids, but if those actions that your kids do really make you dislike them, imagine the effect that those actions have on other people. And he says that you might think that, um, you know, 
you're really kind and you might think, you know, I'm really patient. I love my kids. I'll never turn resentful towards them. But he says that, you know, we all have a threshold and we all have the propensity to be good and bad. And, you know, you might never know one day they may do a really small action that you dislike and you might just snap at them. And you don't want that to happen because it can really hurt the child. Rule number six, set your house in perfect order before you criticize the world. So rule number six is about cleaning up your life. And Jordan Peterson asks us these questions. He asks us, do we have any habits that we know that are destroying our life, our health, and our well-being? Have we taken full advantage of all the opportunities that have been offered to us? And have we said what needs to be said to our family and friends? And Jordan Peterson gives us this bit of advice on how to clean up our lives. He says to start to stop doing what we know that is wrong. And he also says that we don't need to waste time questioning how we know something is wrong because you can know that something is wrong without knowing why. You can trust your own judgment. All right, so we've come to the end of my summary of the first six rules of Jordan Peterson's 10 Rules for Life. So now I thought I'll just briefly tell you about my experience reading this book. So I really enjoyed this book and it really helped me to explain things I previously knew. So for example, I knew things such as that, you know, we should really um, choose who we are um, to be friends with really carefully and that we should, you know, um, our posture should always be straight and stuff. But I didn't necessarily know why and this book really explained it. And I would really recommend this book for people who are into psychology because it explains a lot of social constructs and it explains the behavior of people as well. But one thing to note is that this book can get a bit complicated. It can get a bit long-winded and go off tangent. And I think that might be because Jordan Peterson is a psychologist and a lecturer and he's really intelligent. And so I think maybe he just wanted to pack a lot of information into this book so what I would recommend is, um, while reading this book, is to also check out some of his lectures and also to check out his interview with Dave Rubin on the Rubin Report because it really helps you to digest the book and the information inside. I also would recommend you to go on to Reddit and also to read blogs so that you can get the opinion of other people as well because I think everybody's experience um, of reading this book will be different. Everybody will take out different um, points because some points might be more useful to others and than yourself. So I would def definitely recommend this um, to do. But I'll leave the links in the description so that you can go check them out. So this has been a summary of the first six rules. If you'd like me to do a summary on the last six rules, do hit um, the like button and subscribe to my channel so that I have an indicator of how many people want the next video. So that's been my video of 12 rules for life and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye!